Hello, welcome back. So, we are discussing about the plant sampling and I was giving examples that what are the right way of doing sampling and what are the common mistakes we make in our plant sampling. This is a good example and many times we have to do this that is sampling from stationary situations. The material is not moving. We said that we have to take samples when the material is moving that is from a moving stream. I hope that you all are aware of stockpiles. Like we are having a huge body of material we have stacked there because at that moment at that as of now we do not know how to utilize them, but we are hopeful that in future probably we can extract or we can convert them into a valuable products. So, your management has asked you to send him the information about the average assay content of any metal bearing mineral into that stockpile. So, you are given the task of sampling. So, this is a huge stockpile and many times we do we try to take up we try to pick up samples from different sides of this stockpile, but that is incorrect sampling because this stockpile may have been generated over a period of last 20 years. So, initially whatever the material was there, so that is now hiding somewhere in the so middle of this stockpile. So, you are collecting when you are collecting from only from the sides the samples, so that may have a different characteristics than what is inside. So, when you plan to utilize this stockpile material, you will be utilizing the entire thing. If you are fortunate that when the samples you have collected from this sides of this, you may be getting a very good amount of a valuable mineral. And based on that, you are taking a decision that okay, we will further process it and they go for a extraction plant. But say suppose this entire stockpile is around 20 million ton and you said that you have got 5 percent of this material x based on the sample you have collected only from the side. But maybe inside there is almost 0 percentage of that material. So, when you start doing your processing and your extraction plant you may find that you are getting only at a rate of 1 percent of that material x. So, your entire economics your entire investment is in will not bring profit as you have expected. So, how do I collect samples from a stationary material? It is a very difficult proposition. So, what it should be tried that when the stockpile is being formed or when it is being dislodged that means, you try to move the material stacked into the stockpile and from that moving stream you try to get a sample if possible if your economics if your budget permits that. Otherwise you may have to think of some equipment 
that which cross cut this entire dump at different heights and at different depths. So, that you minimize the chances of missing any particle, any important mineral in large quantity what is hiding somewhere else. Sampling from sieves, trucks and wagons, here also my advice is that when the material is being poured into the truck or maybe in the sieve or when it is getting say delivered to a place that means where it is being emptied, that time the materials what is inside there will be in a moving stream, try to get that a representative sample. But many a times we are forced to take a representative sample from that. So, for that although it is impossible to extract representative samples from ore concentrated matter etcetera in the hold of a sieve, it is almost impossible that it is already filled up and then you are asked to take a representative sample. And you try to assess that how much is that material available, because it is very difficult to get hold of the bottom of that. But many a times if the particles are very small sizes and they have got a bit of dampness, then probably you can use a spear sampler to take a representative sample. Why not a dry state? The dry state they are not compact, so you may miss some of this that because they may uh, uh, say actually because of the frictions in between your spear sample head and your material, the materials may be sliding out from your say available area of your sphere that is what is being advised. So, my suggestion would be that you try to take the sample if possible when the sieve or the truck is filled up with your fine material or when it is getting emptied at one place and there you should take a representative sample. Moisture sampling suppose moisture is a very critical parameter for my client and you have taken a representative sample, but you are sending that representative sample for to the lab through a open conveyor belt that means, it is open to the atmosphere that is what is being done here. So, it will definitely pick up some moisture from the atmosphere. So, your moisture data what you will be reporting that may be erroneous. Many a times as I said repeatedly that there will be a considerable delay in many times in many situations between your collecting your samples and your analysis. So, in that case your moisture sample if it is not preserved properly that will also give you erroneous result. So, you have to take all these precautions also. Now, in laboratory Suppose, you are given 20 kilograms of sample and you have to do chemical analysis on that or say assay analysis of that, but for your assay analysis you need only 1 gram. So, again you have to do sampling from that 20 kg 20 kilograms to 1 gram. So, what are the different techniques for laboratory sampling? One is called grab sampling that means, you take the material of say 20 kg material you flatten them, then you take samples from different locations and then you mix them up and then you do, uh, you repeat the test, you repeat the uh, say this technique again and again that means, you mix them up, flatten it and then you just with a spoon you take samples from different locations, mix them up and then continue it unless and until you get a 1 gram of sample, it is called grab sampling. There is another process it is called coning and quartering. You make a cone 
and that cone angle and all this what when I talked about the angle of repose you probably remember. So, a cone will be formed why you want to form a cone now because you are giving equal opportunity for all the particulates to reorient and rearrange themselves based on their physical properties like your shape size and densities and then you flatten them with a plate the pressure you flatten them like this into a floor which is a smooth floor and then after flattening it you just cut it into four equal parts you can have partitions to divide it into four equal parts then you mix the opposite sides that means you mix this sample with this one and discard these two and that is how gradually you repeat this test and to reduce the your sample weight and when you arrive at a level of few grams then that is your sample on which the assay analysis should be done. There is another technique it is called ripple sampling or say sample splitters. So, the sample splitters are basically arranged like this in a opposite side of that and here you have got an opening and then they are basically half of feet diverted this direction half of feet is diverted to that direction. Here you need a little bit of skill that is you take your entire sample into a your uh, tray or a scoop and then gently you uh, let them fall into this splitter openings and they will be diverted 50 50 to this splitter. So, you collect all the samples collected from this side and remove these samples and then you repeat the test with the samples collected from this side to minimum to reduce the total mass of your sample. This is another one that is called the rotary ripple. What you do? Now, you put your 10, 20 kg material here that is a feed hopper and then you have got a vibratory feeder here. You have to monitor the speed and everything that you know, should fall gently that means, you are using the principle of cutting across at a 90 degree angle of the falling stream. So, the material because of vibration the material will flow in this direction and when it is falling you have got a turn table rotating turn table and you have got sample containers. The number of containers will depend on what is the angle of that. So, you can cover with that you can have 8 containers you can have 12 you can have 16 of different volumes. So, that dimensions of these containers will depend on how much is the sample you want in uh, you, uh, what is the reduction ratio that is to, from 20 kg you want to take first 10 kg then 10 kg you want to make it 1 kg and 1 kilogram you want to make 200 kilo 200 grams like that you should have different sizes of this and this turntable they rotate at a fixed rpm. So, what will happen? So, because you are cutting the stream at a right angle and you are collecting the samples be careful about the openings and all this. So, these are readily available in the market there are many manufacturers and so the entire lot is equally distributed to all the containers. Now, you take either one container out for your main sample or may you maybe you can take two or three containers uh, randomly uh, and then mix them up and repeat the test with another say actually smaller size of rotary ripple and then you can keep on reducing the uh, amount of your sample. So, this is a paper by Khan in 1968 he did this test very controlled experiments for evaluating the errors or the standard deviations in the sampling errors of different techniques what we used in uh, laboratory with a 60 40 mixture of fine and coarse sand. So, with the coning and quartering technique the standard deviation of samples even after taking all the precautions by following all the um, uh, say your the measures to minimize the 
errors. The standard deviation was 6.81 percent. Grab sampling it is 5.14, chute type sampler it is 1.01 percent, rotary refill it was 0 0.125 and random variation for a theoretically perfect sampler was 0 0.076. But please do remember that if you have a different type of particle these numbers may change, but what it indicates that which one is more reliable. It is quite evident that this chute type sampler and rotary ripple probably the rotary ripple sampler is much more reliable if you want more accuracy. The reason is simple because here the chances of human error is very less because the feeding and your sampling all is done automatically by your equipment. So, it is done mechanically. So, if we summarize it the sampling although the subject is quite vast, but we have to cut short the many topics even in sampling. But what I wanted to tell you that in this introductory course, even if you have taken care of this much what we have discussed, I think you will be doing your sampling next time in a much better way. So, if we summarize the basic rule for correct sampling and sample processing is that all parts of the ore concentrate sludge or smelter product or waste being sampled must have an equal probability of being collected and becoming part of the final sample for analysis. The, anal the analogy I can draw that for any democratic country when we elect the head of the nation you will find that how beautifully it is designed that actually every person who is eligible to cast vote he or she is having a right to decide that who will be my leader. And the leader is the representative that head of the nation is the representative of the entire country. So, that is the basically the sampling means that you are taking only so, out of say suppose in a country like India we have got 120 crores of people and you have got only one president of India. So, if the selection process is not robust then maybe we will be inducing some bias into that selection that he that president elected he may be biased towards particular section of our entire population, but that should not be the idealistic situation. Similarly, in this case when you are taking 1 gram sample if that sample is not appropriate then your entire analysis based on that data will be wrong. And for that we have to do we have to make sure that all parts of the ore concentrate and slurry they are given the equal opportunity to be selected. If this is not the case bias is easily introduced that cannot be eliminated by simply averaging replicate measurements. That means that if we now give more importance in only on the analysis that is what is being done in most of the cases. But if your actual sample is incorrect, if you already into induce bias into that your entire decision will be in the wrong direction. Care must also be taken to ensure that sample masses are adequate at each stage of sampling and sample preparation to achieve the required precision. 
how accurately how accurate data you want how precise data you want based on that you should decide by applying GYS equation that at each stage how much of sample weight I must collect and then when you bring it to the laboratory again you have to follow the accurate or the most effective sampling technique to minimize the weight of the sample before we send it to my chemist for analysis. Thank you very much.